The nulls are now closer to where the puppet points are. They're actually on top. Let me scale down these nulls a little bit by holding down Shift, Option, Plus, and Minus. Just to... It'll get busy. The comp will get busy visually if you have these giant elements you know, all over. Well, if we had two arms and a torso and things like that. So I'm going to scale it down. Okay, once we have the null set into the position of where the puppet points are, let's express each puppet point to a null. We want to hold down Option and let's click the stopwatch on wrist. Take our pick whip, move it up to position, let go, hit enter. Um, this, this works fine at first, but once you express all the puppet points to all the nulls and then once the nulls are parented to each other the actual puppet points will shoot off in different directions and actually won't stay where they currently are so the way to fix that is to delete from transition on and we're going to put in the phrase to capitalize comp um, parentheses bracket zero comma zero bracket close parentheses hit enter. This expression will keep the puppet point exactly where the null currently is no matter if the null is parented to something else. So the values will never change. So let's just take this here and let's highlight that so we don't have to type it again. Copy it. Let's hit uh, the stopwatch on here. Hold down option on the elbow and pick whip and drag to position. Let's delete what we need to delete. Paste. Let's do the same for here, to shoulder, paste, there we go. Now that we have the puppet points um, parented to these nulls, you can see if we move the null, the puppet point will follow, just like how the puppet point uh, tool distorted the arm itself. If you get a better control on the animation of the arm itself, it'd be nice to do what we did with the other arm, was basically parent the, the hand to the elbow, the elbow to the shoulder, and the shoulder to the torso. So all you gotta do is take your parent to your pick whip here for your parenting and drag it to elbow, drag your elbow to shoulder, and let's drag the shoulder to torso. And let's turn our torso and our head on so we can see it. And let's move our head above our arm. Actually let's move our arm below the head. There we go. Maybe below the torso for this one. Okay, and like I said, now the um, the arm layer here is being driven by those nulls and by the puppet points, so we no longer actually have to work with that layer. So let's lock it and let's hide it away. So you use the little hide guy here, hold down, uh, hit F4. I'll give you the hide um, toggle here, so we'll just turn that off. And now it's visually gone in your layers. Um, it's really good to do that for organizational needs. You know, once you start having all these different nulls and things that you don't need to see any longer, you can just hide them and, and lock them away so you you know you won't accidentally move them or it just looks cleaner in your timeline here. So if you notice if I move the position of the character up and down, that arm is moving with the torso here. If I move the shoulder, like rotation, you can see that the puppet tool points are rotating as well. The elbow is doing the same. There you go. And it's giving you a nice in-between um, that the puppeted arm does not give you. So if we turn on the puppeted arm again, which is right here, if we want to do that same move, it's a little bit sharper, the angles here. Let me move this down so it's a better view. The one on the left looks a little bit more natural, curve-wise, where the one on the, the right is a little bit straight. Um, and that's one of the benefits. It looks a little bit more natural. Uh, as you can see, the hand's not connected, and it's very simple to take this hand. Let's put the elbow back to, or all of them back to their right positions. So let's make sure it's zero. And let's take the hand here and parent it to the hand null here. Let's just make sure I got the wrong one. But let's take the correct one here. Let's move it up to about there and parent it to the hand. So if I hit rotation on the hand, you can see the hand moves with that, but also if I hit rotation on the elbow, the hand should follow as well, and it's always going to be parented correctly. So you can do a nice wave. You can do a lot of great animation using this. Um, the last thing you could do, if we bring back the uh, arm element here, uh, when you, you might want the lower arm of the character to overlap. Instead of doing 
going behind, as you can see here. Let's bring that up. You might want to set a uh, overlapping point with the, po the puppet tool. So if you go to overlap here and you highlight the arm that we were working on, and we want to make sure that this part of the arm overlaps this part of the arm. So now that we have that set there, we go down to our puppet tool, look for overlap here, and we'll just play with the settings. All I'm going to do is extend instead of playing with the position or, or, the, uh, or the, the amount it fec affects here, the percentage. Uh, I can maybe move this over a little bit. So this lower hand here, this lower arm, excuse me, will overlap the front of the other arm, which will uh, look more natural when we actually start animating it. Okay, let's take the elbow rotation here. This actually helps really well with um, drawn files. So if you have a character with an outline uh, around the outline with a fill color, um, the line will will break on the inner all part of the elbow and will continue to stay straight or or unbroken uh, on the outside of the arm, which looks a little bit more natural. Uh, and you can get away with less drawn animation and just use puppet points for that. Um, that's basically it for the puppet tool. I'm sorry that this podcast uh, had taken me so long. Uh, February slipped by real quick and uh, a lot of things jumped in my lap, but uh, hopefully I'll continue to do these. And thanks for uh, taking a look.